Welcome back to the third devlog for Deep Space. This update was a pretty good balance between polishing what already exists in the game and adding new content on top of that. Someone recommended me this presentation on Game Feel, which <laughs> made me die inside to watch how nervous this guy was presenting. And that's pretty much all I have to say on Game Feel. Like, just fill your games with love and tiny details. And are there any applauses or questions? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, young Willem. That's great. Um... But he made a good demonstration of the importance of those tiny little features that give the game just a nice feeling. So the first thing I did was want to make so that the interaction takes time. This was something I was going to add eventually anyway for things like opening doors, but I'm glad I got to it now because I'm, it's such a small change, but it genuinely feels a lot better just to pick things up. The hex shape fill under the text actually wasn't a conscious design decision. I was just browsing through the list of sprites that I had in my project, and I saw one and I thought it looked cool. I don't know why, but something about it just feels so much more satisfying than a normal circle. The interaction system as a whole is really open so that new interactable objects can really easily be created, like this chair. No. Last time I brought up the chair, there was a war! Anyway, the next thing I wanted to improve on was the inventory. It's not a huge difference, but I thought some nice sprites instead of flat colors would liven it up a bit. I also added a new inventory slot ammo, as at some point in the near future I'll be working on ranged combat. And it wasn't at random that I decided to expand on the interact system and the inventory system in the same update, because what I planned on doing next was looting. As it stood, the only loot in the game was a knife which spawned in when the game started. But now, there's chests. And with this new interaction system, and this new inventory system, I command thee to open! second let me just zoom in here on this code oh well, yeah I uh, think I see the problem there that should do it and open oh no way dude this is like the rarest item in the game oh I'm treasuring that so, I'm, I'm beyond ecstatic with how well this turned out for a bunch of different reasons. First being, it's actually using a new loot table system I designed, uh, which lets me customize what items can spawn, how many of them, and if an item should have a minimum amount that's required to spawn or not. But even more impressive than that is that it's all multi-threaded. Now, what exactly that means, I began writing an explanation for, but then the script got too long. So I actually made that into a separate video, which I've linked in the description, but basically it means I can run the loot table calculations really fast. This is perfect because you could have bosses or chests with potentially hundreds of different items that can spawn, and the game needs to somehow pick out of all of those which ones to give you. That can slow your computer down quite a bit, so having it multi-threaded helps spare your PC's processor. Back to the game, this means that we now have a system set up for giving out loot, whether it be from a container, like a chest, or an enemy. Next, I added a weapon UI. It's nothing fancy, it's just a small little bar at the bottom right that shows you the cooldown on your melee weapon. I wanted to take a page out of the Sea of Thieves book. In that game, the UI is extremely minimal during a lot of your gameplay, which helps you feel more immersed in the world. And I think small stuff like this helps move us toward that goal. And finally, you may have noticed the AI acting uh, a bit strange. 
You probably didn't question it, but in the last devlog, you may have noticed that the AI just stopped for no reason when they were chasing me in that ending skit. And uh, that's because I broke the pathfinding, and I have no idea how. And so I actually didn't really have time to fix it in this update, and this is the result. But anyway, think back to the first devlog when I showed you the editor for dialogue. Now that's been implemented into the game. If I walk up to the NPC, you'll see that I can interact with them. You'll notice that my dialogue choices are exactly the same as they were in the editor. I can see their name at the top, their text at the bottom, and I'm presented with a list of choices. It's nothing fancy, but you can go dialogue to dialogue. But wow, like, I already have working dialogue and a cool editor for it, like, I can't believe it. So wow, that was a lot of new content. So that's it for this devlog. If you were cool and joined the Patreon, you would have gotten to see some awesome art in the Discord before anyone else. And because I'm a one-man team, I absolutely love people who signed up because they let me focus on programming and scene design uh, while allowing me to buy assets for the game, like this awesome nature pack that I bought to make the test scene. And for my epic Patreon beta testers, I'll be releasing a demo scene in like a month. Might even make a whole video on it. And don't forget that there is a Discord if you're interested in why a war was started last devlog between the three rival gangs, the ships, the chairs, and the signs. And I hope to see you in the next one. A uh, quick ending note tagged on here. Uh, I plan on changing how I record devlogs for the next update, just because the style I'm doing right now is really time consuming, you know, uh, writing a script and getting all the footage right at the end of the deadline. So I plan on trying something new for the next one, so hopefully you guys like that, and again, thanks for watching.